So what comes next is the CPC, the Candidate Preparation Course, which is held down at the Commando Training Centre, Royal Marines at Limston. So you have to go and get the train to Limston Commando. It has its own train station that you're only allowed to use if you have business with the camp. So you, you've been met by an instructor and you've been taken onto the training camp. And now you have to complete a series of physical tests over two days, finding out your results on the third day. And if you've passed it all, you can then progress into a troop. So the first stage is the bleep test, which for those of you that, that don't know, it's a series of like shuttle runs and you have to run to one side, beep, run back, beep. As you progress throughout the levels, it gets harder and harder, the beeps become shorter and shorter, and you have to run quicker and quicker. Pass mark here is 10.5 as a minimum, so always aim for higher. The reason being, if you can only hit 10.5, and on this particular day, the warm-up's really hard, or you don't feel well, or you're struggling, you've got no fudge factor there. So always aim for at least a level over, if you can. Uh, and that's going to help you if you have any nightmares on the day. Next up is the RMFA, the Royal Marines Fitness Assessment, which is a press-up, sit-up, and pull-up test, all to the beep, ensuring perfect form um, as you are demonstrated. So the minimum pass scores for the press-ups are 30, with the top score being 60. Aim for the top scores, all right? So these are done to a beep. So it's beep, beep. And that's how you have to perform them. Under control, without any poor form. The sit-ups, minimum score 40, top score 85. Again, aim for the top scores. You want to know you've got plenty of fudge factor in the tank, so you aren't going to fall short when you come to the day. And then the pull-up test, which is on a sort of wooden beam. So rather than a bar that you can get your hands around like this, you're looking like this, over grip. Minimum score 4, maximum score 16. Aim for the top scores. Now, prior to going down, I could bang out 19 overarm pull-ups. I gave myself that extra preparation. This was one thing that I was quite good at. And I had that confidence going down, knowing I was going to pass. Don't go down there thinking, I hope that I pass, because I, I, I can only do five. I can only do four. You need to have done the work prior to going. You need to have that self-confidence in the back of your mind that you can pass this no matter what happens. All right? And once this is done, you'll then do a feet to beam demonstration. So you hold onto the beam and you have to kick your feet up to the beam. And this is more of a teach. And this is to show you the sort of form that you're gonna be required to do when you get to rope climbing. So we do lots of, of rope climbing in Royal Marines basic training. The feet to beam is all about practicing that motion. All right. And once you have completed all of these things, we're now gonna move on to the swim test. So the swim test is done in a pool, on camp, just next to the gym. And what you are expected to do is jump off a three metre diving board, no goggles allowed for this one, and then you've got to swim a length there, a length back, approximately 150 metres, without touching the wall, come back and tread water, two minutes. You then have to get out of the pool without touching the sides, and that is you done for the swim test. Ensure you have put in plenty of preparation with this. A lot of people don't practice swimming as much they just hammer gym work or a little bit of running swimming is massive and you do a lot of swimming in in Royal Marines basic training I struggled with this because being honest I did not put the work in prior to going and I regretted it massively so when you get to Limston it's too late then you've already signed yourself up for uh, a world of pain if you're struggling in swimming and you do see people fail this there was a lad on our CPC it, it was called PRMC back then who'd come over from uh, the Caribbean. He'd obviously traveled quite far and clearly hadn't done a lot of swimming prior to coming. Jumped in off the top diving board and didn't resurface. And they had to throw in a pole for him to get pulled out with. The lifeguard saved him and uh, it was crack on from there. But what I'm saying is don't rock up, not being able to swim, jump in and cross your fingers and hope for the best because a miracle won't happen. You need to have done the work and you need to know in, in the back of your mind that you have what it takes to pass the test on the day. So you've finished your swim test and you're now going down to the bottom field to do the high obstacle course. This is more of a teach, if anything, and a bit of a test of, of your nerve when it comes to height. So you go over uh, uh, the high obstacles, a little beam, a little wooden sort of thing to step over, some ropes, and then you go onto the bottom field, salt course, and you get run round that, 
bit of a show on how to do everything, what it's going to be like when you're getting thrashed around the bottom field in basic training, and a little beast in here. So that is day one of the CPC done, in the bag. So just get this done, get this first day done, and then the hardest part is coming on day two. Day two of the CPC, and you're being took up to the endurance course on Woodbury Common. And this is the determination test. This is the hard part. So you are basically thrashed around a series of underwater tunnels, little pools, uh, Peter's pool, a bit of a sort of pond full of water on a rope, and all your kit is now soaking wet. You get thrashed around this course, and it's sort of up, uphill, gravel trails, doing hill sprints, doing crawling, doing fireman's carries, drags, press-ups, sit-ups, burpees, all of the painful stuff. So... A big thing is to practice these before you go down there. And this is hard because doing fireman's carries, doing drags, it blows your legs out. So leg strength's massive. Making sure that you've worked with really fatigued legs uh, is absolutely huge and a massive help in your preparation. Um, now, after this, you, you are thrashed here for a long time and you're crawling through all sorts of stuff, uh, sheep stuff, cow stuff, all, all, all of the mud, all of the good stuff. You've now got to run four miles back to camp. And if you fail this or drop back, you failed the whole course. So you need to make sure you stick with the pack here. Now, something that I say is practicing running on fatigued legs is not a bad thing because quite a lot of people fail on running back with really, really jelly legs. They have, have never done it before. So maybe try it before you go. Um, because once your legs are blown from lo lots of fireman's carries and lots of drags, you are going to struggle. Another one is people cramp up here a lot. Now, add in a little bit of salt, a little bit of sodium to your food. Um, throughout your time there is going to help with that cramp. So drinking plenty of, of water, replenishing the salts that you sweat out during rigorous exercise. But once you've got this done, that is you finished with the physical tasks. A few more lectures. Whilst you're down there, a bit of an explanation as to what the ROP's going to be like, the recruit orientation, orientation phase, if you were fortunate enough to pass, and then you find out your results the next day, um, and you are on your way back home.